Well, good morning again, and welcome to all of you on this Spirit Alive Day. Um, maybe if you've been around here a while, you know by now that uh, we love to use preaching series, and so I'm excited to uh, preach today and to begin a new sermon series. It's a four-week sermon series, and uh, we'll get into that a little bit in just a minute, but to uh, add a little humor... I thought I'd show you this little promo video for preaching and using sermon series. Take a look. Let's give a hand to our pastors. I don't have any pastors here. Let's give them a round of applause, man. Having to deal with us. Having to keep our short attention spans. An hour a week, that's hard to do. That's why a lot of pastors love the series. A lot of pastors always in, you know, a 12-part, 18-part, 90-part series. <laughs> always has a weird name like content or discontent. Which tent do you live in? <laughs> this was so funny. This pastor one time, he's like, all right, y'all, I'm so excited about a new series. We're starting next week. Going from one bring friends. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be real good. You know, I was thinking the other day, we all love Twinkies. I love Twinkies. You love Twinkies. They're delicious. But we don't all eat Twinkies the same way. No, we don't. Sometimes we don't know how to fit in. So I'm so excited about a new series we're starting next week. Because mm -hmm. some people eat Twinkies that break them in half. Some people shave off the top. Some people drill a hole in the end and squeeze out the good stuff. Some people full commando jam the whole thing in their mouth at one time. So join me next week on the first part of a 48-part series, How to Be a Twinkie in a Ding Dong World. Amen. It's going to be good. That's right. All right, we are starting a new sermon series. It is not 48 weeks. It is four weeks, and it's not called How to Be a Twinkie in a Ding Dong World, but it does have a catchy name, uh, and it's called Fit for Life, Strengthening Your Core. Fit for Life, Strengthening Your Core. And we're going to take a look at four weeks, how it is that we can be fit for life. In the physical fitness world, of course, it's important for us to strengthen our core. But the same is true in our spiritual life. It's important for us to be strong spiritually and to strengthen ourselves at the core of our spiritual life. So we're going to be taking a look for four weeks using our mission statement, and uh, we'll be singing the song that we just learned. Uh, using our mission statement and talking about the four words, gather, grow, give, and go, from our Gloria Day mission statement. Now, I know in our Friday email and Friday Facebook post and the Friday followings, members, if you receive that, if you're not getting that, let us know in the office, but uh, we do send that out every week, and I said in my Friday email that I was probably going to give you a little homework, and that was to recite our Gloria Day mission and vision statement that has those four words in it. Anybody know our mission statement, vision statement? Somebody at the first service was bold enough to say it. Anybody? How about a, yeah? Is that a right? Okay, all right, let's give it a try. Gather. Right, awesome, all to the glory of God, right? Freed by Christ, we gather, grow, give, and go, all to the glory of God. Let's give a round of applause. Nice job, way to go. Now let's say that together. Freed by Christ, we gather, grow, give, and go, all to the glory of God. All to the glory of God. Those are ways in which we can stay spiritually fit, fit from our core, and so... Today, we're going to start with that first word, gather, gather. For you and me to be strong spiritually, it is important for us to gather like we are today to worship God, gather for worship on a regular basis. The Bible tells us this over and over and over again. In that first reading that Michelle read from Psalm 150, great psalm to read almost every single day. It says, praise the Lord, praise God in His sanctuary, praise God in His mighty firmament, praise Him for His mighty deeds. And it goes on and says, praise God with trumpets, with lutes, with harps, with dance, with tambourine, with strings, 
with pipe, we could add with keyboard, with guitar, with drums, with bass, with organ. Let everything that breathes, it says, praise the Lord. Let everything that breathes, praise the Lord. Take a look at your neighbor and see if they're breathing. Check them out. Are they breathing? If they're snoring, you have my permission to wake them up. The Bible says, if you're breathing, you are meant to worship God. We have a dog I've shared with you about one of our dogs named Trinity, but we have another dog, it's a boxer named Brandy, and Brandy goes out into our backyard every single morning, and especially on sunny days like this, we have a nice lawn in our backyard, and she goes out into the center of our yard, there's nobody around, it's about 7.30 in the morning usually, and she just stands and she looks around, and then she looks up. And then she starts barking and barking and barking and barking. And she's letting everybody know that she's alive, that she's there. I think she's praising God. She is praising God. Let everything that breathes, even boxers, praise the Lord. She's praising God for a new day. She's praising God for the sunshine. When's the last time you praise God for the sunshine? We're meant to praise God everything that breathes. Praise the Lord. That's what Psalm 150 says. I've been reading the Psalms out of uh, Eugene Peterson's translation, The Message, lately. And in Psalm 96, one of the things that it says in there, it says, Bravo, God, bravo. Give, let God have an encore. Let's praise God with everything we've got. This isn't just me telling you this, the importance of worship, and the importance of praising God. It's not just my opinion it's not just Pastor Tim saying, hey, you need to be in worship. This is God's Word. It's God's Word telling you, worship God. You need to be here today. You need to be here on a regular basis. It's awesome that you are. I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir because you're here, but turn to your neighbor and say, you need to be here today. We need to be here. Do you know as much as you need to breathe, air to breathe, you need to worship God. As much as you need to eat, as much as you need to brush your teeth three times a day, turn to your neighbor, see if they brush it. No, don't do that. <laughs> but we need to worship God. You know, God created us to worship Him, to praise Him. It's in our DNA. It really is to be connected to the Creator. And for us to stay spiritually fit, worshiping God is important. Now, we can pretend it's optional. We can pretend that worship isn't all that important, but it is. It's not optional. It's one of God's commands, right? God's top 10 list, the 10 commandments, they weren't suggestions. They were commands. Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Not 26 times out of 52, but every Sabbath. Worship is at the core of being fit for life. And so if some, re some reason you're working on the Sabbath, then we have options on Wednesdays and on Saturdays. It's important to worship God at least once a week. Now, I need to give you a little friendly reminder from your pastor that even when you're on vacation, even when you're on vacation, did you know that there are Christian churches that are conveniently located across this country? All over the place and across this world. You can worship God even when you're away from here, even when you're on vacation. I learned that as a, as a young kid. My parents would never miss worship. We'd be on vacation. We'd be driving across the country. We'd stop at a church where nobody knew us. And my dad, he loved to sing so loud. We'd be sitting in a small church, and when the first hymn started, he would belt it out. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, he'd be singing so loud. The kids, we were so embarrassed. People would turn around and stare at him. And no kidding, every single time, every single time we knew what was going to happen, somebody came up afterwards and said, if you live here, you need to join the choir. You need to be part of the choir. Worship's important. The Bible tells us over and over again, so why is it? Why is it that worship is so essential to us? Why does God say in His Word that worship is essential for us to be fit? Think about it this way. The word worship in the Bible literally means to bow down before God, to bow down before God. In other words, what, it, what it's saying is that when you come to worship and I come to worship, we humble ourselves before God. 
We empty ourselves in this place before God. You see, worship, first and foremost, isn't what you or I get out of it. It's not, it's not about us. You know, you kind of say, oh, worship was good today, or I didn't get much out of worship today, or you go home and you have roast preacher and you say, oh, I didn't get much out of that sermon today. Pastor Tim kind of blew it. That's wrong thinking. That's kind of wrong thinking about worshiping God. Worshiping God is bowing down before God, emptying yourself of all your stuff, everything that you bring into this place, emptying yourself and opening yourself up so that God can fill you, that God's word can change you into the person that God created you to be. Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. What does that mean? It means that we are poor. We empty ourselves of our own spirit, Things like arrogance, pride, materialism, self-centeredness, whatever it may be, we're empty to those. We come to this place, Christ kills it in the waters of baptism. We're going to experience a baptism in just a little while. And we're reminded that on the cross and in the resurrection, all that stuff is killed, and so we're emptied, and then we can be opened up to what God has for us. We're filled with God's stuff, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, generosity, self-control, all of that that Jesus teaches, we're filled with that and we're made into new people. Does that make sense? You see, right here in worship, before God and before one another, this is a place where we can be honest. We can be brutally honest about who we are and about who God is. You see, there's so many places in your world and in mine and in our society and our culture where we think we have to put on masks, we have to pretend Wow, everybody's looking good. Oh, preacher boy's looking good today. Wow, look at me. But not here. We don't have to do that. We can be honest with ourselves. We can bring all of our stuff. We can bring our hurts. We can bring our pains. We can bring our confusion. We can bring our joys. We can bring our illnesses, whatever it is, our sinfulness, and we can be emptied of that. We can be filled up with God. We can be honest and let God have his way with us through the singing through the choir anthems, through his word, through the sacraments, through fellowship with one another, through the red word and spoken word. That's what God does. He has his way with us and fills us up. In the old English, going way, way back into the, the beginnings of that word worship, it was really two words that were together, worth and ship, worth and ship. So it asks the questions, who is worthy of your praise. When you come to worship, you need to ask, who is worthy of my praise above everybody else? And then ship, worth ship. The word ship literally means to shape. A ship is in a certain shape so that it will float. That's how the word ship got its name. It is in a certain shape. So the second question is, who is worthy to shape you? Who do you want to shape you? into the person that you are created to be? Who do you want to shape into the person that you want to be? So you ask the question, who is worthy of your praise? Worth. And then who is worthy to shape you? Worship. Worship. So, for example, if you let fame or just desire to be famous or popularity or prestige or money or whatever it is, if you let that stuff be the driving force above everything else in your life, that is what you worship because that is what is shaping you more than anything else. Worship. So let me ask you, who or what do you want to be shaped by? Who do you want to be shaped by in your life? Who gets your highest praise? I'm talking about your highest praise. Is it a celebrity? Is it an athlete or a sports team? The Vikings opener is today. You know I was going to get into that. The Vikings opener is today. Who gets our highest praise? I love to yell and I love to hoot and I love to holler and I love to raise my arms in praise when I'm at a Vikings game. Do I do the same in worship? It's okay to hoot. It's okay to holler. It's okay to make a joyful noise. It's okay to lift our hands in praise when we worship. But it's also okay to worship God in silence and in silent prayer and let that still, small voice come to us. Why is it so important? Because God is worthy of our praise. And he's the one who is worthy to shape us higher and above anybody else. Now, it's good to praise other things. 
It's good to praise accomplishments, for example. It's fun to give praise to the Vikings and to the Packers. Well, (laughs) maybe not the Packers, but it is good to praise people, right? You can clap for that. That's okay. It's all right. It's good to praise people who mentor you, right? It's good to praise your kids. If you have kids, when they do well, it's good to praise them or your grandchildren. But who gets your highest praise? That's one of the questions about Christian worship. Who gets your best praise? Think about it. God's the one who gives you air to breathe. He gives you food to eat. He gives you relationships. He gives you families. He gives you friends. He gives you sunshine. Have you praised God yet for the sunshine? My boxer did every single day. Everything that breathes. But God has given you salvation. He's given you faith in Jesus Christ. And by faith, by grace, through faith, you are saved in Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven. Have you praised God for that? Lately, every single day, we are to worship and we are to praise. And I know sometimes when it comes to giving God praise, sometimes we say, ah, I don't really feel like it. I don't really feel like going to worship today. I'm kind of tired or I have something better to do. God says, no excuses, please. I don't like your excuses. They won't hold up in front of God, believe me. God says, I'll see you here every week. If it can't be Sunday, maybe it's Saturday. If it can't be Saturday, maybe it's Wednesday. I'll see you here every week because we need to be reminded God knows we need to be shaped above anything else by God. To have the old Adam, the old self killed, put to death in the waters of baptism, we're drowned, all that other stuff is drowned, and we are raised up to be new people in Christ. And that happens in worship. It's like the old story of the mother and the daughter. They were going to watch an artist, a sculpture, and he started, the sculptor started with this big block of marble, and he started chiseling away and carving away at this block of marble, and slowly there appeared an image. And finally, when the little girl could see what it was, it was a lion, she kind of looked at her mother and she said, Mom, how did that man know that there was a lion in there? That's what God does to you. He brings out your new self. He raises you up to new life. How did God know that there's a new being in there? He gives that to you in Jesus Christ. Friends, God wants to take hold of you from the inside out and sculpt you and shape you, give you real life, real meaningful life, truth with a capital T, Jesus Christ. You see, God is a God who's not going to rest. He will never rest until sinners Lost people like you and me and so many other people right outside of our walls here are found by the amazing grace of God. And the only thing that frees us from that which binds us, and there's a lot of stuff that binds us up, the only thing that frees us from that and sculpts us into the the self that we were created to be is the power of God's forgiving love found in the cross and found in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hear me today. You are loved. You are forgiven. You are claimed by God. Let that shape you. Let that get into the core of your very being. We empty ourselves at worship, and we are filled up. As I close today, let me quote Joshua from the Old Testament, who so famously said, As for me and my house, we will worship the Lord. As for me and my house, we will worship the Lord as a parent, I know that my kids now in their 20s, they get influenced by all kinds of people and all kinds of voices, many of them good, some of them not so much. But more than anything else, I want them to be shaped by Jesus, by his teachings, by his love, by his forgiveness, by his cross, and by his resurrection. And so if you're a parent or if you're a grandparent, or you're an aunt or an uncle, or here in church mentoring children, who is most worthy of shaping your kids? Your kids are shaped by a lot of people and by a lot of voices. Who do you want above everything else to shape them? Who's most worthy of their praise? Who's most worthy of your praise? Is it a sports team, or is it a politician, or a political party? Is it a celebrity? Is it Justin Bieber? I hope not. Did I just say Justin Bieber in a sermon? I'm sorry. No, it's God in the flesh, right? We want Jesus Christ. 
to be the one who shapes us and who shapes our children. He's the one who loves us unconditionally, loves us perfectly, gives us life here and now, and gives us everlasting life forever. We can praise God for those gifts. So on this Spirit Alive Day, this rally day, I want to thank you for being here in worship because a huge part of being fit for life and strengthening your spiritual core is worshiping, bowing down, emptying yourself, humbling yourself before God so that God can fill you up with His grace and with His love. You see, God is worthy of our best, and He's worthy of our highest praise now and forever. So as Psalm 150 ends, let's say it and let's, let's remember it and let's memorize it. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Amen. Now may the peace of God, that peace which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.